Hello, this video will demonstrate how the current necessarily existent small schools or NEST formula functions and which data sources are utilized in the formula. Let's first review the statutory language for the NEST program. Utah Code 53F2304 outlines school districts are required to apply to receive a NEST designation from the State Board of Education. Applications are statutorily required to be submitted to the board before April 2nd each year. The board will classify eligible schools in applicable school districts as necessarily existent small schools. This decision required to, is required to be communicated to school districts before June 2nd each year. The board has statutory responsibility to prepare and publish objective standards and guidelines for determining which small schools are necessarily existent. They do this by creating a board rule. Let's look in board rule 277-445. In Board Rule R277-445, it outlines the eligibility requirements for NEST schools. The first eligibility requirement to be classified as a NEST school is the school's ADM, Average Daily Membership. Regression formulas were established that out outline the maximum sizes for funding under the NEST program. The maximum ADM for an elementary school is 160. For a one or two year secondary school, it's 300. For a three-year secondary school, it's 450. For a four-year secondary school, it's 500. And for a six-year secondary school, it's 600. A school must, that, those are the maximum sizes that a school can be in order to be classified as necessarily existent. Any individual nest school with fewer than 10 students receives the same WPU value as schools with, uh, with 10 students. If eligible schools meet the small ADM requirement, the next eligibility requirement is the travel requirement. The travel requirement requires a one-way bus travel through board-approved bus routes uh, for any student from the assigned school to the nearest school within the district of the same type, meaning elementary or secondary. Uh, students in grades kindergarten through grade 6 have to travel more than 45 minutes and students in grades 7 through 12 have to travel more than one hour and 15 minutes. If the eligible school meets these two requirements, then the school is considered a NEST school. There are some exceptions to the eligibility um, of the travel requirement in board rule. This uh, appears in, in subsection 3. The appropriation for fiscal year 18 for NEST was $31,501,000. The board gives first priority from the NEST appropriation each year to eligible school districts who seek reimbursement for out-of-state tuition. This is in accordance to Utah Code 53G6305. The board withheld $200,000 for out-of-state re reimbursement requests. If this set-aside is not fully utilized uh, when we calculate the out-of-state reimbursement requests, any remaining fund balance is distributed back through the NEST formula in the current year. Uh, the remaining appropriation after the set-aside will fund eligible NEST schools each year. Let's review the final NEST formula for fiscal year 18. This is the NEST final calculation for fiscal year 18. The difference between the NEST formula calculated after the legislative session each year for the upcoming fiscal year and the final NEST formula calculation in November uh, of each fiscal year is the data set I utilize. In the, in the legislative estimates for fiscal year 18, I utilize the ADM for fiscal year 16 and the October 1st headcount from fiscal year 16 and fiscal year 17. For the final NEST calculation that I calculate in November, I utilize the ADM for fiscal year 17 and the October 1st headcounts from fiscal year 17 and 18. The change in data sources is due to timing issues when the formula needs to be prepared to aid school districts in their budgeting process and when actual current data is available, uh, updated data for ADM and October 1. Let's review the final calculation for 18. On the Funding Detail tab of the NEST Calculation Spreadsheet, I have listed all eligible approved NEST schools by school district. This is in columns A, B, and C. Column D outlines the qualified NEST ADM band by school. Remember, ADM is, is the determining factor of the first eligibility criteria for small. So this is elementary, first and, and two-year secondary, three-year, four-year secondary, and six-year secondary. Columns E through Q are the ADM values by year-end fiscal year 17 for grades uh, for each eligible NEST school. Column R 
is the total ADM for all grades served for that nest school. Column S is the total weighted ADM for that nest school. Remember that kindergarten is weighted at 0.55 and all other grades are weighted at 1. Columns T and U are the growth are the October 1st headcounts for fiscal year 17 and 18 for that nest school. Column V is the growth percent change in enrollment based on the current year and prior year October 1st headcount. The growth percentage, whether that's positive or negative, is then added to the total weighted WP P, or the total weighted ADM in columns W to arrive at the estimated ADM for year end fiscal year 18. This process is very similar to the regular WPU calculation. Column X represents the nest WPU value. To get the nest WPU value, we have to use the nest type from column D. So this um, for Minersville Elementary, we'll use this as an example. The nest type is elementary right here in column D. And then we have to look up the estimated fiscal year ADM value, which is 95.269. On the, on the associated regression table. So we are going to use the elementary regression table and we're going to look for 95.269 and that's going to return us the nest WPU value. So we, if we click on the elementary table, we're gonna scroll down on this ADM on column AT till we find 95. When we find 95 here, it's going to return the nest value of 45.840. If we return back to the funding details page, you can see that uh, in a simple VLOOKUP formula, we look up that value on the elementary table, regression table, it returns 45.840. That is the nest WPU value that we will use. Uh, these regression tables um, were developed several years ago. It is my understanding that the regression tables were developed to represent costs submitted by NEST schools. However, the Utah State Board of Education is unable to replicate those regression tables, so they have remained at a somewhat constant level from when they were developed. Column Y is the total NEST funds per eligible school, which is calculated by taking the NEST WPUs in column X and multiplying them by the current WPU value for that fiscal year. For fiscal year 18, the WPU value was $3,311. That means that Minersville Elementary is going to receive $151,775.01 in NEST funds. Next, we're going to review the carryover formula. Let's look at that now. We are now looking at the fiscal year 17 carry forward sheet. It's titled Fiscal Year 17 uh, Carry Forward Tax Effort. In fiscal year 17, the NEST formula was not able to allocate out $446,860.85. This is due to either not enough W or not enough ADM for school districts uh, in comparison to NEST WPUs, uh, but the formula was unable to allocate uh, that amount of money, which translates into 140.346 WPUs that are left unallocated. The NEST statute states that if there's any funds left over in a fiscal year, those funds remain with the program and are distributed in the next fiscal year, and they are distributed based on tax effort. So if we look at column C, uh, it lists each eligible school district's NEST WPUs from the prior year. So in fiscal year 17, uh, Beaver had 417.756 total NEST WPUs. Column D represents each school district's total tax rate from that same fiscal year. So we're using tax year 16, which is utilized in fiscal year 17. So this is the total tax rate for each school district. Cell D8 represents the statewide average of all school district tax rates for our state. So our statewide average tax rate is 0.007151. Column E represents the school district's total tax rate as a percentage of, of the average of the school district's tax rate. So we're taking um, the school district's rate. So for Beaver, we're taking the 0 0.006268 and we're dividing it by the statewide average of 0 0.007151. This results in 87.66%. This percentage is then multiplied by the 17 w NEST WPUs in column C right here 
to arrive at the total tax units in column F. In cell F8, we get the total statewide tax units for all, for all school districts in our state. That total is 9,019.096. Next, the tax units by school district, so 366.185, is divided by the statewide total, 9019.096, to get a prorated percentage. We use this percentage is then multiplied by the available carry forward WPUs, which was 140.346 to arrive at um, a taxing effort WPUs. These WPUs are then multiplied by the 17 WPU value, which was $3,184. This results in column H, which is the amount of carry forward funds each school district will receive. So in fiscal year 18, Beaver received $18,143.05 from the available carry forward funds from fiscal year 17. And that total again was $446.80. We prepare this carry forward sheet each year, um, any fiscal year that, that has any remaining balance left. This concludes the NEST tutorial, tutorial for um, the final NEST WPU calculation. Thank you.